like 10 seconds of silence. Fantastic. Please Sounds take good. over. Hello. Hello. Hi. So yeah, you want to say hi? So first of all, welcome to uh, CERN point P5 of LHC. My name is Sonia. I'm a particle physicist who moved a certain point of his, uh, her life uh, to astroparticle physicist, but uh, I will join today for this virtual visit to show you and to discover the CMS detector. And uh, we will play, and I will enjoy a lot, you will see, <laughs> much more than you maybe, uh, playing with a magnetic field. Okay, a um, few other um, information about me. I'm Italian, I'm coming from Rome. Is a, a lot of time I'm here at CERN and uh, I spend more or less uh, all my career here at CERN uh, doing physics. As uh, you see, you see, I'm still alive. <laughs> I still enjoy. So I think this could be a good message for you. Okay, I give the floor to Andres. Uh, thanks, Sonia. Um, so my name is Andres. I grew up in Puerto Rico and I've been, um, yeah, sort of doing research at CERN for a while. And I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a member of the CMS collaboration. We'll tell you all about this. And I think, uh, yeah, it's, I think we can get started and mm -hmm. we're excited to have you guys. It's going to be a very special visit because this, this is going to be exceptional. What that means is that we are very close to resuming or restarting collisions at the LHC after a long period, a couple of years of uh, upgrades and maintenance. And I was convinced that we weren't going to be able to show you guys the experiment or the detector itself, uh, but it looks like we should be able to do so. And it's going to be really special, really, really exciting. So, yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Uh, I think as I have to go, I start to prepare yeah, and then maybe, okay, I'm doing uh, this uh, kind of gymnastic. I show you my shoes, huh? you see? Yeah. And uh, these are special shoes and there is uh, uh, iron here. So, so you will stick very, on the floor. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it will be, it will be a, 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 a strange feeling for me to walk when I will be inside, but I will tell you when we, uh, this will happen. Okay, so now I say bye bye okay. and we'll see you back sure. in the current. Uh, okay? yeah. well, and maybe, maybe if you could uh, run around in the control room. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, while, I you are, myself. Yeah, while you are taking on the, the techniques, uh, I think we should show where we are. Yes. <laughs> okay, I leave you. So I Don't believe worry. Sultan mentioned you guys uh, participated in a visit from LHCB. So I suspect that they talked about the LHC already and maybe I, I hopefully this is not too much of an overlap, right? But we do want to sort of give you some context and show you guys where we are. So this, this picture is, um, if you Google, you know, the LHC, you'll find this sort of, um, um, yeah, the sort of figure. It's not an actual photograph. There's not a yellow circle around the French countryside around here. It's it's just representing or just you know showing you guys what the LHC tunnel looks like. But of course, um, well, we, before we get into specifics, just to show you sort of the geography. So uh, this picture is taken from the Jura Mountains, which are actually next right next to where we are here at CMS. And CMS, you can see uh, it's shown in the left of the figure. And you can see where Atlas and CERN itself are. So that's what we call this, the main CERN campus. Um, and CERN is, of course, an international laboratory. You probably heard a bit about it. Uh, it's, it's got a very rich and interesting history and it has been doing uh, very fundamental science since it was founded in the 50s. And nowadays, you know, the, the largest experiments and some of the largest scientific collaborations in the world take place here at CERN. And in particular, the Large Hadron Collider is one of these very, very large experiments. But kind of going back to the geography, you can most likely see the Geneva Lake in the distance. 
And if you've ever been to the Geneva area, one thing that I don't really see in the photo is the jet d'eau. But uh, from, from the Jura Mountains, sometimes you can actually see, yeah, maybe you can kind of see it. It's, a, it's like a water jet that, you know, um, more than 100 meters. High. It's more than, it's about 300 meters. It's a, a water fountain, if you will, but it's shooting up water about 300 feet in the air. It's very impressive. Uh, and then I, I guess a little bit more in the background, you can see the Salev, uh, which is just this tiny mountains. And then at the very far background, you see these clouds. They're not clouds. That's Mont Blanc. That's the Alps. Uh, so it's very often a very spectacular view. So uh, you can also right now see Sonia. Yes, yes I think us. we should. We and should give, uh... Yeah, we can show you guys yeah. what she's looking at. And Sonia, maybe you can take over and describe what you're seeing. Yes, OK. Thank you very much, Andres. So uh, I'm going now, I do a panor take a panorama, you see, of the control room. Here we have two rooms now. Yes, OK. Here we have Andres and Sultan. And uh, here close by, we have the chief leader. So. The person who is responsible of the activity today, you see uh, here, and the, you, during the data taking, we have also uh, the person is responsible. Usually we take uh, eight hours shifts, and these, when there is the data taking, uh, are going all along uh, the day. So you can have also night shifts, uh, afternoon shifts, and of course, morning shifts. And uh, even when there is no data taking, as you see, there is activity. So we have at least the shift leader. There are some other posts which now are not filled, but we have another corner of the control room you see here, uh, where, where now I don't want to specify all, all the things. However, you see, we have other checks, a check, uh, checks here, many screens, many, things and maybe this is really interesting to show you the magnetic field can you read i don't know if it's visible we have a 3.8 tesla inside the cavern and this is obtained having in the coil a current of about 18,000 amps which is a huge amount of current okay so this is an what very uh, strong magnet <laughs> Yes, exactly. And this is wow. what I'm going to, to experience uh, in person, but I hope uh, that you will enjoy with me what, uh, what happens inside. Now, yeah. if I go on the other side, because there Sorry, is Sonia, another... A, yes. a really quick comment. I mean, yeah. maybe for a bit of context, I don't know how helpful this is, but you know, 3.8 Tesla, that's about 200,000 times larger than the Earth's magnetic field. Um, and when we go to the cavern, you're not really going to, you know, the magnetic field changes within the cavern. So inside of the magnetic or, or let's say the magnet volume, that's where we have this very strong magnetic field. But we're still going to be able to show you guys just how strong that is, even yeah, yeah. pretty far well, away. Actually, Andres, outside <laughs> where Sonia is going to go, it is a couple of hundreds of millitesla maximum. Yeah. But of course, this is rapidly changing. As well. Right. So let's switch to Sonia. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Then maybe uh, using the, the slide, you can also address, uh, show them how the magnetic field is uh, is bent back uh, or around the CMS. So, which is a uh, nice uh, to to explain to the to the to the to our audience to show that we are using also the magnetic field outside the magnet because it's a solenoid. So, in principle, uh, uh, let's say. By tradition, we use only the, the magnetic field inside, but in CMS, this is a very special uh, thing. Uh, the magnetic field is uh, also used uh, uh, from outside to uh, improve the measurements uh, for muons, which are the only particle reaching the edge of the, of the detector. Now, you see, I'm in, a par in another room. Oh, it's, it's the same room, which is split in two, basically. I can still show you, OK? Indicating here is where Andres is. Okay, he's uh, just shaking his head, his sense. And I'm in another uh, part of the control room where you see, for example, you have seen ECAL. 
this is the electromagnetic calorimeter is one of the sub detectors of CMS. And okay, we, we, we have a many posts, you see now they are not filled, where you can control these uh, sub detectors. Now uh, I go out from the control room and uh, I go in the corridor. We're starting to enter the experimental zone still on the surface. So the first door is this one. It's okay, now we can see. And the second door. And now I approach the first door I have to badge, which is uh, which introduced me to the the experimental zone, but let's say in the in surface. Now, uh, what I would like to show you is uh, how I enter this part. So uh, I'm waiting for uh, Noemi who came back, but I can show you. So you see here I have this uh, reader. So what I had to do, I had to badge with my dosimeter here, which is uh, this object. A dosimeter is an object uh, I keep always on me because this is measuring uh, the amount of radiation uh, around me. Uh, so if it's if with me, I can uh, I can know we we have a reader here. You see now I will not do the check, but however with this reader you see here I can uh, check if uh, uh, let's say the radiation uh, uh, in the zone I'm going uh, is uh, is uh, let's say safe. I'm here, so I will batch here. And then I will enter this door. Now, what happens? This door has a check, three checks. One is on the weight, which is on the floor. I don't know if we can see here. Maybe you can see a square with the, some uh, yellow dots. And uh, so I enter, this is how to say, this is a door for people. So this means that it, it, there is a check uh, for to see if uh, they, we, we have a person that is not material there. Uh, and then there is another check because uh, again, the door is only for people. So is an infrared, uh, there are infrared beams uh, checking that I'm not entering with back, backpack, for example, to again, entering materials through this door. And finally, we have a check of the iris. So the biometrical check to recognize myself as a person. Uh, now I will uh, try to go, maybe some of you remember as seen, as watched the, the movie, Angel and Demons. Uh, this door was also in this movie, but I, I, I was I to say, this was Hollywood style. Now I do what, my check, okay. And I enter. A biometrical check. The system recognized me, and now uh, I leave uh, uh, Noemi. She is helping me in this, uh, so she's taking the tour as me. She's doing the same, showing you things, and I wait here. She's much more expert and me in entering the door, I would have failed because she has the camera now and also a small bag. It can be, it can be challenging to go through the doors and there, yes. Tony yes, mentioned so that you, there are, there, it's checking like you can only cross your legs two times, you only have two legs. Uh, but things, if it, you have long hair, for example, so, or, or something like if you have something around your neck, like your dosimeter, it can throw the machine off and it doesn't let you in. Exactly. And once I can tell you once, uh, Andres, uh, I had uh, my hair, but I had, they were cut here. So there was just one, one single hair in, uh, in front of my eyes. I, I couldn't see it, but the, 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 the biomedical system could, and I was not recognized. It was really a, cha a challenge to enter there. Now, why I stopped here? Because uh, you see this blue door, this is the door for the material. So Basically, people want as to enter the material uh, to, to bring them uh, underground. What they do, they leave the material inside this door. They badge through these other green green uh, doors, as you see here, which are uh, the same as uh, I did on the other side. I passed on the other side, and then uh, they recover the material from this door. Okay, 
uh, if you would have been here as visitors, as now we are again allowed to bring 12 visitors per guide, and uh, we do not ask people to badge through the, the, uh, the biometrical system, what we do, we leave people inside the material <laughs> door, and then we recover them after we enter, which is uh, maybe not so, how to say, kind, but is effective. Now, I, you see, we have a minus three, which is at minus 97 meters, and then uh, the elevator is coming up. We have, uh, as you see, three levels, minus three, minus two, and minus one, which co correspond roughly to minus, let's say, 100 and minus three, minus 90, the minus two, and minus 80, the minus one, more or less. Sonia, maybe I can yes. jump in really quickly. So we have a question about why why what are these checks for what um, what's the purpose and one of the very uh first thing that comes to mind is sonia showed you her dosimeter here's mine so what if somebody comes in you you guys are visiting and you take my dosimeter or i lose it or some you know somebody in principle could just batch and go through so that's why it checks your, it takes a picture of your retina and it compares it to the database, that sort of thing. And maybe just to quickly add, um, this kind of, all these access have to be very carefully monitored and not just the people that go in and out, but also the material that comes in and out. And that, that that's a lengthy story, right? But everything is very carefully kept track of. And that's partly why we have these systems. So Sonia is about to head downstairs. I think we uh, might- in the elevator. That. Yes, we, so we, we just, just lost, lost her. Okay, so I'll I think we're gonna to we're gonna slide. go to the slides really quick, and maybe we can go to the next one. No, maybe this one. Right. So I mentioned this before. I, I mentioned there's no yellow circle around, uh, you know, outside our window. So most of the facilities are underground, and uh, you know the LHC itself is between. I mean, th this picture it looks like everything is uh, level, let's say, but in fact. Uh, you know, some facilities like Atlas will be roughly 50 meters underground. But so here at CMS, as Sonia pointed out, it's more like 100 meters underground. There's other places where it's 150 meters. So the entire facility is sort of slanted. What is very interesting, Andres, the I deepest think... experiment is Alice, which is, which is the highest one with respect to the sea level, oh, because yeah. the Terran moves up. More exactly. <laughs> so that's that's kind of the point that I was trying to make is that the reason, the main reason that things are so deep underground is so not because you, you guys have probably heard about cosmic yes. rays. Uh, in fact, we see oh, cosmic okay. rays in our detector uh, and so what we're doing right now, which uh, kind of addresses one of the questions that's yes. in the Q&A. Right. Although Andres? we don't have Yes. Sorry. sorry. So no, no, no. It's just uh, then you can continue. It's just to say that that I arrived to the minus two. Maybe people can see. So I'm uh, more almost uh, to minus ninety meters, and I wanted just to show what I see going out the elevator because I blocked the elevator. You see, you you heard the something. Maybe a sound. It started to complain, and. Uh, I want to, to show people just the safety things I have here before entering, and then I'll let you conclude uh, the interesting things you were saying. So uh, I have, a, a, you see a phone, this is uh, directly connected to the fire brigade in case there is any issue here. There is, of course, uh, uh, all people uh, uh, reaching this, this, uh, this path, accessing uh, the experimental zone, they are trained to use uh, a, an extinguisher. This, is also, uh, this also answers a little bit uh, the question before. So you should be trained to come here. You cannot come uh, uh, without any check. And then uh, we have- we, we are trained to use the extinguisher, but we are also trained then not to combat the fire. And, and which kind of fire extinguisher is adequate for each kind of situation? There's, Yes, exactly. many details that were not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, of course, but usually the, at least the, in the course what the, the fire brigade told us that they put uh, the right uh, extinguisher in the right place. So you don't have to ask yourself if it's good or not, because it should be, be the one which you can use. And then, of course, uh, 
okay, we are trained, uh, some of them are, are trained, uh, or us are trained to, to be first aiders. And the last but not least, that we can switch, uh, they say that the evacuation alarm can be switched uh, automatically, of course, if there is a gas leakage or fire, or smoke, whatever, but we, can, we are also allowed, if we have a good reason, a very good reason, to break this glass and to push this button. Uh, just to tell you what happens, if you push this button during the data taking, you stop the all data taking on LHC, not only in CMS, but everywhere, okay? It's game over, let's say. So you, have, you should have a very good uh, uh, reason to push this button. Um, now I enter, but okay, maybe, uh, maybe Andres, you want to finish uh, what you were saying, and then I will start again. It's it sure. uh, okay for Thank you? Thank you, yeah. yeah. I'll just very briefly um, come back to the, the point I was making. So uh, we were talking about why the facilities are so deep underground. And the, I, for a long time, I thought, well, it's because there are these cosmic rays that come from all over the universe. And um, in fact, even if you have a detector that's 100 meters underground, you can see these particles travel through your detector. And in fact, that's what we are currently doing right now. You can actually see this. This is great. Thank you, Sultan. <laughs> so Sultan is showing you right now, if you look at the dates for these figures. Yeah, this came from the online system. Yeah. So Sultan very quickly pulled these up and is showing you what is what is it that we're doing right now. So we have our detector that's operational. And instead of looking at what happens when particles collide we're actually looking at we're trying to find particles that go through our detector and they're coming from space so we do indeed see cosmic rays in our detector and we do use this data and we use it for several reasons but one of them is for alignment of the detector which i can talk about later but finally to get to the point we have to build this build the detectors so deep underground because they're extremely heavy and sonia can tell you more detail but our detector is about twice as heavy as the Eiffel Tower. So if you built that kind of a structure or that kind of detector that's so heavy on the surface, it would literally sink. The soil is not strong enough. I mean, kind of like it would not be stable. It would not be stable. So we have to build these uh, detectors down where the bedrock is and the bedrock changes throughout the region. region so that sort of defines the, uh, the, the depth of where things are DLC. Sonia, go ahead, please. Yes. Okay. So uh, I entered the experiment. I officially entered the experimental, uh, let's say, level. Now uh, I I didn't tell you, but okay, this maybe is important to say. Uh, Noemi is helping me to show you these gray doors, and these gray doors uh, they are simply, you see, uh, going to the elevator. Now you see they are fire doors. And uh, it's really important because this is a safety, the room uh, which is in front of the elevator is a safety zone because the uh, air inside of this room is uh, uh, pumped outside, is overpressurized. This means that if there is uh, in this area smoke or gas leakage, uh, it cannot enter inside, so it's safe. In case of an evacuation alarm, what we had to do, we had to reach this zone and to evacuate through the elevator. This is one of the strange things that this doesn't happen in the daily life because usually if there is fire in a building, they ask you not to use the elevator. But here, because of this uh, specific system, and this is not only in CMS, but all the sites we have here um, in, uh, on LHC, we have this uh, safety, uh, let's say, uh, approach. And so we can evacuate uh, using the elevator. Also because I have to say, we are about minus 90. Now, in average, a floor is a three meters. So you can count how many floors you should, uh, uh, you have to do to go, to go on, uh, to reach the surface, which is really, even if you are young, I can tell you, you are, you are in panic. It's not easy. Now let's go to the physics where we are. Now you should imagine that here, uh, let's say you have uh, two with my hands, I will try to do two, uh, caverns as we call, okay. Two big holes, uh, 
underground. One is uh, thin and long, which is the service cavern where I am. Uh, what, why we call it service cavern? Because in the service cavern, we put all the facilities, all the stuff, the electronics, the pumps, the power supplies, whatever you can imagine, which is important to make the hour detector working. It's here in the cavern, here in the cavern, uh, service cavern. In parallel, in parallel, you have uh, a larger cavern and shorter, which is the cavern of, of the, 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 the detector. And of course, there, is, there are connections uh, with optical fibers to bring the signals we have inside. For example, you have seen already the, uh, this event display with the cosmics. Uh, and this comes because we take cosmics inside the cavern and then uh, through the electronics, uh, this reaches uh, the, the screen. You have uh, all the computers uh, on the surface. Now, uh, I don't know if it's visible here. We have, uh, let's say, a big hole. Uh, uh, it's uh, beside the, 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 the elevator uh, uh, pipe. And uh, through this, uh, this, uh, this uh, pipe, let's say, which is here, and uh, Noemi, she's trying to show you, uh, you can see also a light square uh, really on the top. This is the ceiling of the building where we are, but uh, just uh, 90 meters up, okay, upstairs. And now uh, through this uh, big hole, we can bring uh, using a crane material and to bring where? If we go down with our uh, uh, mobile phone, we can see, uh, I hope we can see the minus 100, okay? The minus 100 level, uh, there is a grid here, so it's not really clear, but we will go there. Uh, the minus 100 is the level of the detector. And in particular, maybe, I don't know if you can distinguish uh, a darker zone, which uh, are concrete blocks, gray con concrete blocks. Usually when there is no data taking, uh, there is a corridor. And you can see from this uh, part, you can see already parts of the detector. But now everything is closed, but because as uh, Andres said, we are preparing for the real data taking. And so everything is uh, closed. Concrete, why? Because in any case, you produce, uh, you produce radiation inside the, the, the experimental cavern. So you want to protect this part. Let so me Sonia, say that this, yes. Uh, sorry, not to interrupt, but with this in mind, uh, I was thinking maybe we could show a picture of the detector before we see it. Yep. And, yes, and on the other side, on the other side here, I will I will yeah. just bring uh, turn, and I, I just wanted to say that usually uh, we can come along the all year with the visitors in this place. Okay, so this is quite strange. The other detectors on LHC they can they do not allow people to go underground. The CMS can. Uh, because of a particular reason, if I have time, I will tell you, but however, everything to coming back to the fact that we protect the, the experimental cavern with concrete blocks is because here where I am, uh, the background of radiation is uh, almost zero. Okay, now as uh, suge Andres suggested, maybe we can show a few pictures of the detector here. Uh, so first of all, maybe this one, which was when they started to dig the big hole where uh, they then they lowered the, the detector. And you see, <laughs> the first surprise was that they found, I don't know if you can see this, a Roman villa. You should imagine that this zone is very uh, historical zone. Julius Caesar came here and not only. And so uh, you can have some remnants uh, of this uh, age. So this was the first, let's say, challenge for uh, people building uh, a CMS. And then, OK, uh, the moment you see some other pictures, and then the moment, that, the moment they started to dig, they, at a certain point, they really met a, 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 an underground river. Uh, I know that Zoltan, uh, he has many details about this, maybe after if he wants uh, to say something about this. However, how they, they uh, manage this situation with this uh, underground river, they uh, use the liquid nitrogen to freeze uh, the water, and then they put concrete on the walls, as you see here, and then they continue to, to, uh, with, uh, with the construction. And then, in fact, you can see here the cavern empty, you see? This is the, the big hole from where we have lowered the detector. 
And this is the big cavern empty, okay? At this point, before putting the detector, they did the, what I, I learned is called the, the foam party, which is this one. Uh, I will show you these. These are a red structure on the, on the walls. And the, basically you get foam from here. What, when you use this, you use this in case of fire in the cavern. And when you have done anything <laughs> to do to stop this fire, a, this is the last chance, okay? And it's called the foam party, but nobody wants to use this. This is why it was done with the empty cavern because basically, when you inject this foam, it goes inside the detector, all the parts of the detector. And so you destroy basically the detector. So we don't want to do this. So we hope we cross finger not to do this. And then, uh, okay, CMS, maybe what I can say, you should imagine is a, a big uh, cylinder, huh? um, you know, as a Swiss roll. <laughs> so in slices, okay? So uh, this cylinder, is a 25 meters long, so a building of eight floors in this uh, horizontally. And then if you take the cross section of this, uh, of this detector that you can see also here, is 15 meters long. So this is a building of five floors. Now, the total, um, the total weight of this detector is 14,000 tons. Uh, I know this uh, appears a big number, but uh, I, as I, maybe you have under, understood, I like to make comparison. Uh, I have a city car, okay? And uh, mm, in average, a city, a city car is one ton. Think about 14,000 city cars, one on the top of the other. So in this way, as Andres also said that we, you cannot have for this on surface, uh, uh, you cannot even bring uh, in one shot the detector underground, okay? So what they did a very, in a very clever way, they, they built the detector uh, as a Lego. So you have many wheels, you can, uh, you can uh, then you can uh, lower and you can rebuild the detector. And in fact, you see here some moments uh, um, the, with the, the, the cables here, uh, one of the wheel lowered uh, inside the cavern. Uh, the crane was coming is a typical crane used for the containers in uh, uh, harbors and this came from Genoa Harbor in Italy. You can see many other things. It took uh, uh, eight hours to, to, to lower the, uh, the wheels which are in the edge of the detector of the Swiss roll, let's say. And for the one in the middle, which contains also the um, the magnet, as you can see from this picture, you see the magnet, which is this big uh, uh, cylinder uh, uh, with uh, the hole inside, let's say, this is a solenoid. Uh, it took 12 hours. Now, if you, are, you want to spend some time, so you can enjoy and just calculate 100 meters, and you know the time, you can calculate the speed uh, of this, uh, uh, of this, uh, uh, maneuver and uh, I would like to say that this speed is related also and this is the last thing I say and then I'll go to move to uh, move on the, the the speed of this uh, uh, to lower the detector uh, was not only because of course you have a big weight with these cables but also because as I told you you have this big hole from where we are lower the detector now this big hole uh, was um, how to say fitting uh, quite <laughs> precisely the diameter of the wheel. So 10 centimeter from each side were left. Now you can imagine if you lower something uh, like uh, as I have here and uh, you go down uh, you have not uh, enough space uh, in the on the edges, uh, what you had for sure avoid is that to start an oscillation, okay? And if you think that CMS is, uh, how to say, is not cheap, let's say, <laughs> you don't want to destroy your detector. This is why we went really, really, um, really, really slowly. Now, uh, I enter this other door and I go to the, to the one of the electronics room, uh, which constitute what we call uh, the first level of filtering or trigger, as we call it, which is the level one. Uh, I don't know, Andres. Andres, I will go in. There is a, a, a lot of noise for me. I know that you are not affected by, by this, but uh, for me, there is a lot of noise. So maybe 
I can go through the top corridors, just saying that this is special because if you come here in person, you cannot go through the corridors of the electronics. Uh, and, and maybe if you want to comment, uh, for me, it would be easier. Is it okay with you? Sonia, I think it, it, would, be, it would be good. And also yeah. to, to make it a, a little bit uh, faster because now it is yeah. uh, 17 hours 50 and the, 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 the main uh, visual thing has not been shown. Um, okay, so in I the meantime, we got a question. Yeah, in the meantime, we yeah. got a question uh, about the the fire extinguishing systems and the noble gases. Okay, so, so in these I racks that you see on the picture, we have uh, carbon dioxide uh, fire extinguishing systems as well that uh, can be operated automatically. So uh, we don't rely on the on the foam, okay, but only as a last resort. <laughs> In fact, yes, it, as it I was said, only we crossed fingers. So, uh, yeah, so maybe I can very quickly say a quick word about what you guys are looking at, and then we can move on and look at the cavern. So uh, here you see, I, Sonia already mentioned this, right? So from the detector, we have a lot of systems that go in and come out, and we send in a lot of infrastructure, and this will be, you know, cables carrying low voltages, high voltages, and lots of different uh, gases and you know fluids that will control the temperature and so on and then coming out of the detector we of course have a lot of signals so I'll, I'll focus on what Sonia was talking about she mentioned the trigger which you may not know what that is uh, and for you know in particle physics usually a trigger means roughly speaking a filter right a, a selection so at the LHC, we, the, the LHC can provide us collisions as often as 25 nanoseconds apart. So we could have collisions every 25 nanoseconds. And each collision, you may think a proton is, is hitting another, but it's far more complicated than that. We actually have billions and hundreds of billions of protons that come close to each other. And by close to each other, I mean we can focus these particles, these hundreds of billions of protons, about the width of a human hair. So Sonia is pointing to the ODH. Uh, so this is- uh, I can from... take some rest there. <laughs> yeah, but just... Uh, just, just, just to finish that story. So yeah. every time these uh, bunches of protons, which is the technical term, we just call them bunches of protons. You want to try? So these bunches come together and from that uh, collision, we may have between 30 and 50 actual interactions. And Sultan is showing you guys here what this could look like. So you have, you can imagine the two particles are coming from the left and from the right. And these yellow points are represent, representing what the vertices are, or these main interaction points. And here you can see there's many, many of them. Uh, depending, you know, every, every bunch crossing will be different. And we have to try to figure out exactly what happens every single time. But you get an idea here. This is very challenging because we have many, many interactions happening at the same time. And in the end, from what you see right here, many things happen after this, right? It's like uh, we don't, we have to reconstruct what's happening here. And what we see in the end is, you know, energy deposits and tracks in our detector. So signals, we have to figure out what's really actually going on. Like this. Uh, like this, right? So this is the end product. We sort of play detective and we, you can see these uh, green uh, towers, as we call them, these blue towers, and then these uh, red lines, and these are meant to represent muons. So this is sort of like a reconstructing, we call it particle reconstruction, reconstructing what actually happened during these particles, during these collisions. But my, the point I was trying to make is that you, we cannot simply store every single collision or interaction. We really have to be selective and we have to say, well, you know, what if we, every time we see a muon, we can, uh, we can collect or record that information. Every, every Andres? Time see, yes, Sonia, go ahead. When you, no, when you have finished, because I would like to start to play. I saw something strange, which is new for me too today. We are, we want to share our experience. Okay, so let me close by saying that. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. sure. So we have, we need this triggering system 
and we take information from different parts of the detector and we make a decision. Um, but in the end, that's what the trigger system is. And when we were in the service cavern, you could see some of the yeah. you know, fiber optics carrying the signals and uh, FPGAs that are electronics okay. that make decisions. Uh, I, I just have a technical uh, uh, um, um, interrupt for you. Uh, I think we should really proceed to the UXC uh, because at some point we have a so time limitation 15, uh, in let's say 15 yeah, yeah, minutes. I will show just in, this uh, in 15 on, minutes on, we have to, to give it yeah up. I will show only that just this because this is new okay. <laughs> so but, but Sonia, uh, where, we only have where, 15 minutes okay yeah 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 I know and then I will proceed immediately inside so uh, where I am maybe Noemi can show I was coming from this direction from the service cavern here and then here there is a corridor which brings me to this other a zone which is an experimental cavern okay now uh, i have this object and maybe you can see you know you have seen many times uh, there is a magnet here so the moment uh, you see you have some uh, ferromagnetic powder you see what happens here okay now uh, you see that is uh, gently going down okay now i remove this uh, and uh, i i start to look what happens i don't know if you can see that the sand is going down, but a certain point is stop. You see? Can you see it going down? No, it stops. So this is the effect of the magnetic field I have here. Okay? And it, it can go, I can do this. It starts again, but a certain point it stops. You know? because okay, I have the effect of the magnetic field here. This is quite new. So I remove this, I put in my bag yeah, here. And then we enter the cavern. We leave there, this, so I budge before. So I have to budge again. Okay. There is a, now there will be a key which will be released for me. Isn't? No? What happens? <laughs> there should be a key released for me. <laughs> I cannot? Yeah, probably you have to badge again. Yeah, you might yeah? have to try a few times, at least in my experience. But uh, this is the first time I have to badge again. I don't know. What does the screen write for you? Do you want? Restricted access available. Badge. Can you badge again? It's not automatic. Uh, Noemi is uh, Noemi is saying that okay, maybe somebody okay, should uh, open from the control room. Okay, so, uh, Sultan. Because, uh, until last last week, it was automatic. Sultan is intervening now. Yes, I need to have a, a key from one of these boxes. Otherwise, I cannot enter. Let's wait. <laughs> I rebadge again, okay? And we hope. Yes, okay. You see the key, the red one. I take this, and now what I do? Okay. I ask the access okay. here. So one, two, three. That's it. Now the key is on me. I enter. And then, as usual, again, I need the, the biometrical check, which is done. I passed. And now I wait for Noemi doing the same. And then we need just a few moments because we have to change uh, something from, for our camera. So she's, she's showing you her key again. We call it also a token. This is needed to tell the system that we are entering and uh, until this token is doesn't go back in the in its own position we uh, the LHC or if there would have been data we cannot uh, this cannot be switched on again so now we have to change a little bit um, uh, for a moment uh, the stick so i stop if we want to proceed uh, uh, under take then uh, the floor i cannot hear them 
this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we can. We lost you on the video. Is that that's not because of the magnetic field, is it? No, 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 no. This is because they are they are changing the uh, the camera mount, and for some reason they stop it. Uh, do we have no? Do we have any open questions or? I, I did answer a few just okay, by perfect. typing. Perfect. Uh, I think what we could say is uh, what we could show is probably we leave everything this thing. thing. Okay. So this is uh, you can see this figure that Sultan has pulled up, and this is uh, what we call a slice, right? So this is a part of the detector. It's imagine if we sliced the cylindrical onion and took one of the parts of the cylinder, right? So in the center here towards the left. Do we have the image? Where the particle, yeah, so we see you, Sonia. This is where the particles come in and the interactions happen. So the particles coming into and out of the page. And then you can kind of see what happens when different types of particles are produced. You can have charged particles, you can have electrons, muons. Muons are a bit like electrons, but a bit heavier. And you can see how different parts of the detector will react differently or, or they'll be able to see traces or signals from some of these particles. But maybe we can come back to this. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Sonia, yeah, we can hear you. Ah, OK, yes, OK. We are in now. Uh, as you see, these are really free. Let's see what happens if I go close the detector. Uh, there is. As we would expect, uh, there is not too much light. But look, can you see this? Can you confirm me that you can see this uh, from yeah. other? Yeah, see you. Yes. Yeah, you yeah. see. Indeed. You see. Yeah. You see. I'm not cheating. Look, this is the magnetic field. You see. They are wow. not free anymore. I can. You see. Jesus. I can put them here, you see, and they can stick, you see? It's like a, it's like a movie. And then I can also play with other things. So let me play, please, now. <laughs> I know this is the best. Look at this. This should also stay there. It's a little bit, uh, it's not too much, but however, this is also, the key is not doing, you see? The key is not magnetic, you see? But if I took this, uh, you see, this one as an orientation is not too much, but as an orientation. Now, let me. Yes, I will go. Also, this one, this is not, this is not magnetic, but this one is, you see. Now, what we will do, we will go down to play because it's even more intense, so we will go down now. You see the detector, but it's closed. So there is not, uh, it's also, down we have also the light. So maybe if we go, we go down, let's go. And you see, I have these objects, I have to keep very tight in my hand because uh, they are really attracted by the detector. Yeah, but of see? course we've chosen we've chosen the, the the exact size that will not fly through the <laughs> the cover. Yes, but you see, I'm not able to go in a you see in a smooth way. You see, I'm flipping. Yeah, the flipping, the flipping. You see, is, it takes you see really my hand. You see, yeah. it's really nice. So actually, what you see that the camera goes blurred, and this is also due to the magnetic field. Uh, we are we apologize for that, but uh, I think okay. this uh, still worth the show. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. As you see, uh, I am trying to reach now the minus one hundred close to the detector, and uh, I, I am already starting to feel on my shoes the effect of the magnetic field because you can imagine what happens. But I have. Uh, many other things uh, to show you here let's see i have many other things you see this now yes <laughs> i have my 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 shoes uh, which are flipping uh, as uh, as uh, these objects i feel i feel uh, really here which is hard to move uh, you know 
we put on the floor this, I remember. Look this. So actually we got a question about the, the why, why are the magnets operating uh, uh, only the detector is testing. Uh, so actually this is the, the magnet of the detector that is uh, used to bend the charged particles path in order to be able to measure the, the momentum. So this has nothing with the, to do with the accelerator itself. The accelerator has its own magnets. Uh, they are not powered at this moment, of course. You want? Look at this. You see? And I can even, let's see if I can do this. Uh, it's really hard. Yeah, the other question. Uh, so, sorry, Sonia, I'm, I'm just, just yeah, uh, yeah. going through the questions. So um, the other question is about the, the health effect of the, the magnetic field. This field, what Sonia feels now, is uh, really a, a couple of milliteslas. Uh, this is completely harmless. Also, even if she was in the middle of the detector, that obviously she doesn't fit in there uh, <laughs> due to the detector no, built up. Uh, even the 3.8 Tesla would not be too much. Uh, there are MRI machines that work around three Tesla, four Tesla. So this is not a, uh, uh, not a very strong in that, what, what concerns the physiology. But uh, of course, uh, you will have some slight physiological effects, I think after 10 Tesla. So we are, we are pretty far from. Can you see this? It's a little bit out of focus. So yes, yeah. we are out of focus. Uh, ah, okay. We are out of. Can you see yeah, this? Yeah, exactly. So, so we have to bring back the camera a little bit. Yeah, uh, um, Noemi, it's a little yes. bit out of focus. I know it's there's not much. Of, you can Noemi do. doesn't it's hear. Out us. of focus. Oh. <laughs> can you go a little bit? Uh, I the the gems off. Just ask, uh, so as, as Sultan was saying, you really need a much stronger magnetic field, or I don't know, let's say. Can you see like this? So Maybe. Yes. Well, so you know, this is a little bit too blurred. Uh, can you talk about those orange pads below? Yeah. Okay. So uh, where I am, you see. Okay. I just uh, stick uh, this. Uh, this is uh, art. You see. I can do a sculpture. You see. Like that. Now, uh, you see this pad, there are many of these uh, under each slice, and these are very, very important. Why? Because uh, I told you, I told you this one, because I told you that basically the detector uh, is uh, built in wheels or slices, as, as you want. And so we can, uh, of course, we brought down uh, each, each slice, but then we had to rebuild the detector, and the one we want to to, to, to open the detector, this can be done as an accordion, you know, so you can even, uh, you can open a way in, the, in the place you, you really need to do, to work. Now, how do you do this operation to close a two? Okay, I stick my shoes, uh, to, to close and open the detector using the, one part of the, of the job is done by these uh, orange pads, because you see in these orange pads, sorry, because I had to work, there are these pipes, and through these pipes, we inject compressed air. Uh, this compressed air, there are many parts of this, lift a little bit, let's say, not too much, but lift a little bit of the detector. And then uh, I had to, you see, ah, okay, I go here. <laughs> now we have this, uh, I don't know the technical oh. name, I call them cranes, let's say, wheels, uh, we, with these cables we have here, we attach these cables to the to the the wheels and we pull okay and as you have a slide, uh, the, the the detector is a little bit uh, up so it's easier what happens this is to open when you want to close what you do we have other structure as this one other uh, devices in the middle of the detector i don't know if we can go to see them and uh, you just pull back, basically. So you never push, but you pull. Do you want to add okay. something? Yeah, well, not to this one, but we got a very interesting question about the magnet composition. Uh, our magnet and also the, the LHC magnets are built from superconducting material, 
This is a niobium titanium uh, superconductive material that can hold the 18,000 amps. While that it you've is cold. When it is cold, of Very course, cold. thanks. Yes. Um, uh, this should be co uh, cooled really down to 4.2 Kelvins, at least what concerns the CMS magnet. The accelerator magnets work on 1.9. Just to give a bit more context, the CMS magnet is very unique. It's a superconducting solenoid, which means it's basically a cylinder. It's a hollow cylinder with a 18 feet or about 60 meters in inner diameter. Six. Six meters, sorry. sorry. 18, 18 feet. <laughs> 18 right, feet. Roughly. Um, so, uh, yeah, as Sultan was saying, the active superconducting material is niobium titanium, but it's also uh, a lot of the material in the magnet is actually aluminum because you know you have to keep the magnet very very stable you can imagine that when you produce these magnetic fields there's a lot of tension in the material itself and this is what we have to you know the, the process of injecting current into the magnet has to be gradual and very carefully monitored because again you, when you cool it down to about four kelvin there's no electrical resistivity. There's no resistance to it's electric current. Bad, but yeah. if the temperature goes above the, um, what we call the critical temperature, then you will lose superconductivity and start generating a lot of heat, which will basically make the thing explode. We call this a quench. We have to carefully monitor and make sure that if a quench occurs, we can extract all of the current very quickly. Andres? Can I take uh, the floor for a moment? Of course. <laughs> you see, everything uh, is now uh, magnetized. I wanted to show this uh, wall, which is, uh, I'm now on the other side of the cavern. You remember I was talking about uh, concrete blocks. This is the other side. So now I'm in the parallel cavern, which is the experimental cavern, but usually they are not there when uh, there is no need uh, to close the experimental cavern and uh, you can go uh, through this uh, corridor. Uh, I hope you, 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 you were able, you see also my bag is a little bit metallic. So you see, I have many objects, maybe here is a nicer to see all these uh, things. I don't know if you can see better because maybe now there is no, I'm focusing, uh, can you see this? Uh, these chains. Andres, can you confirm me if you can see this or yes, not? Yes, we see. Yes, we see. Okay, yeah. thank yeah. you. So you see, this is one chain. You see, it's really nice. I can also do something, uh, as I said, nicer, like that, for example. And then I have another one, which is a little bit thicker, but uh, more, you see, the, the magnetic field is uh, so intense that you see. In any case, you get the effect also with this one. You see? Okay, you so, see? so folks, we have How about three more minutes before we yes, okay. let everybody go. We're, we're a bit I over think time. I think that, okay, I can come up if there are yes, no I questions. Yes, I think it would, be, yeah? it would be good, Sonia. Yeah. Thanks okay. very much for this. This very, very interesting show. And very unique, very special. You guys <laughs> exactly. are, Sultan was saying this might be the last visit where we get to show the experiment. Exactly, but I, I don't yeah. swear. <laughs> we, we can guarantee it, of course. But okay. You see again the, the detector, however, you see the last part, uh, the, the part uh, where, let's say, LHC enter the detector, but uh, you cannot see the beam pipe because it's completely protected by this orange, uh, uh, protection for the because of the radiation, and so uh, and the detector is there. Now, last thing, and then I go out. Uh, I forgot to to tell you to compare. Sorry, I to go very to compare my size. I'm one meter and sixty, so you can see how it looks like. This is a building on five floor. Okay. Thank you, Sonia. So yeah, I think I go uh, out. we can maybe take a couple of questions if they're exactly time. before wrap up. yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i think we have time for maybe one question because it's running well into the, the afternoon for the class and the students okay. have been you know doing this for about three hours at this point so yeah i mean if 
if there's any questions, please go ahead and I guess in the Q&A, you can ask. Yeah, exactly. Any we, are, we are watching the Q&A. But I hope this was, I mean, it's it's very, it's great for us to be able to show you the experiment. I know that there's a bit of an issue with the focusing, but hopefully this gives you a sense of what it's like to be there. As I said, I think it works. <laughs> and I, I think it's also, I, Sonia was saying the detector's closed. It's a little bit hard to, I mean, there's just not much context, but during the last three years, the detector was, you, you can imagine as an accordion, we can open it up. Um, and it's very exciting to see it close because for the last three years, it was open for maintenance and I'm, I'm very excited to, to see the new physics data, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I uh, don't see any questions, but please feel free. I don't know, uh, or Brian, if you wanna add anything else before we close. No, nah, I think I think everybody's a little worn out. Yes. So with that, I think. Uh, may I ask you to uh, the audience to ask questions? Curiosity. We have we have oh, one how question. About, how dangerous is the magnetic field? So that there, I saw? there's been a yeah, couple okay. of questions, and yeah. maybe let me clarify. So, magnetic fields, unless you're talking about over 10 tesla, which is you're pretty much not going to experience. Maybe it a not even an MRI, I think. But the point is, like, magnetic fields are not dangerous unless you have a medical implant or a pacemaker. Electronic medical implant. Ele so right. Uh, not just electronic, but either electronic or somehow you have a magnetic med medical implant, which I don't think is very common. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's if you have a pacemaker, it could be fatal, right? Um, otherwise, magnetic fields are not really intrinsically dangerous to humans. You can kind of feel an effect, as Sultan was saying, for very strong magnetic fields, but it doesn't mean it's dangerous. It's exactly. just. Can Sonia, I have, go uh, ahead. Yes, go ahead. Andres? Yes, Sonia, can go you ahead. Hear me? Yeah, you no, can no, hear I you. wanted go to ahead. add something, uh, something uh, uh, on that. Uh, consider that uh, there is uh, this uh, medical investigation, which is called the PET scan. And the PET scan uses uh, superconducting magnets uh, with two Tesla. Okay. The it's the MRI. That's I the think. MRI. Yep. Yeah. Ah, sorry, the MRI. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There's, yes, the MRI. But however, they use a magnetic field of two Tesla, and uh, so, which are just a little bit lower than what I was I was experiencing mm -hmm. here. Uh, so we, I leave you the floor because we have to go out. I, I'm out from the cavern, so I come back to the mm -hmm. control room, and then if you want me to stop. Uh, Coming back because we didn't. Um, well, didn't Sonia, we, we will check. I think we, we, we are out of up. time. I think yeah. I will check with um, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I come yeah. immediately. Yep. So I think we're we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah. It's been a very exciting okay. experience, but I think we're we're towards the end of our stamina for for doing some focused attention on the Saturday morning. So let's everybody give all of the the panelists a hand. Thanks, everyone. Special thanks to Noemi and Sultan. Yeah. They uh, yeah, they really worked really hard. Good to organize this for you guys. Thanks. Really appreciate you taking us around the detector again. And we are very sad that this will be the last time for a while, but that's okay. Well, for not too long in, in September, we have a, we, we plan to have a technical stop and we can go in as well again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so keep, keep an eye for, you know, what's going on. We expect to have the first teams in the next month, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. After, after Easter. Yes. So that's the traditional thing that on Easter, Easter Saturday, we get beam in the machine. Yeah. Let's keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, everybody. We will see you later. All right. Have a nice day. Ciao, Thanks. ciao, ciao. Thank Thanks. you so much. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.